I studied filmmaking in the U.S. during the 70s. Recently, I've been doing talk shows on the voiceless dissidents, those that deserve to be heard but are silenced by the corporate media. The Treasury Department of the present Trump administration sanctioned me and my colleagues. I must have harassed them. We continue the show right here from my home. I am Nadir Talib Zadeh on Nadir's show. On Nadir's show. Greetings. The New Horizon Conference is being held in Beirut, Lebanon in late September. Many guests will be attending from the U.S. Important former government officials, military experts, and in general, prominent whistleblowers whose writings have been read by millions of Americans. They are, however, being intimidated by the FBI. In this program, we will see why. In the past decade, a number of conferences under the title of New Horizon have been held in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Interestingly, every time the New Horizon conference draws closer, it attracts more attention. In one of the recent cases, the FBI threatened those participants who were likely to attend the conference. In this program, Nadir Talibzadeh interviews a number of American experts who were harassed by the FBI over the New Horizon Conference. Sander Hicks has won numerous awards for his business and publishing ventures. Hicks is nationally known for his courageous stance and confrontations with Rudy Giuliani, Dick Cheney, and the Shreveport FBI. He relaunched the Megaphone in 2018 in order to get the truth out there, make the case for the impeachment of the US president, and contribute to a grassroots movement that is serious about deep economic and social change. Dr. Scott Bennett, a former member of the U.S. Army 11th Psychological Operations Battalion, attempted to blow the whistle by contacting the commercially controlled media and writing to U.S. politicians after being sacked from his job as terrorist finance investigator after he proved too zealous at the job. He has developed and managed psychological warfare theories, products and operations for U.S. Special Operations Command, U.S. Central Command, the State Department Coordinator for Counterterrorism and other government agencies. He was a research fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Dr. Kevin Barrett, a PhD Arabist Islamologist, is one of America's best-known critics of the War on Terror. He is host of Truth Jihad Radio, a hard-driving weekly radio show, and False Flag Weekly News, an audio-video show produced by Tony Hall, Alan Reese, and Kevin himself. He's also appeared many times on Fox, CNN, PBS, and other broadcast outlets, and has inspired feature stories and op-eds in the New York Times, the Christian Science Monitor, the Chicago Tribune, and other leading publications. Dr. Barrett has taught at colleges and universities in San Francisco, Paris, and Wisconsin, where he ran for Congress in 2008. He got witch-hunted out of the University of Wisconsin for questioning the official story of 9-11.
Effectively banned from American universities, he now works in alternative media. He currently works as a non-profit organizer, author, and radio host. Scott Rickard is a former American intelligence linguist and veteran of the communications technology and national security industries. For over three decades, Scott has worked with national security and international service providers, software developers, product manufacturers, and government, aerospace, and media organizations in the signals intelligence, communication security, open source intelligence, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, and communications and information technology arenas. Philip Giraldi is a former CIA counterterrorism specialist and military intelligence officer. He holds a BA with honors from the University of Chicago and an MA and PhD in Modern History from the University of London. He served 20 years overseas in Turkey, Italy, Germany and Spain. He was the CIA chief of base for the Barcelona Olympics in 1992 and was one of the first Americans to enter Afghanistan in December 2001. Philip is executive director of the Council for the National Interest a Washington-based advocacy group that seeks to encourage and promote a U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East that is consistent with American values and interests. J. Michael Springman served in the United States government in the Commerce Department and as a diplomat with the State Department's Foreign Service with postings in Germany, India and Saudi Arabia. His last assignment with the US Department of State was with the Bureau of Intelligence and Research. He left federal service and currently practices law in the Washington DC area. Fired by the US government for whistleblowing, Michael Springman recounts the role high-ranking US officials played in creating Al-Qaeda. Before Nader's show, Sander Hicks convened a Zoom meeting with the guests mentioned just now regarding their harassment by the FBI over the New Horizon conference. Here, we first watch Hicks's interview with Scott Rickard, then Nader will hold his interview regarding this issue. So Scott, tell us about your recent experience with FBI. They contacted you? Yeah, they were they were pretty um, pretty friendly and uh, easygoing about it. They they came last Thursday um, last week uh, while I was at work, and then left a business card. I called, left a message, and then after I had left a message, uh, the guy called back, wanted to schedule a time, schedule for Monday, and then they showed up. Uh, um, a 39-year-old uh, Air Force OSI uh, retiree, uh, maybe not retiree, but only about 39 years old, but perhaps a uh, military retiree. And then a, uh, a Puerto Rican uh, girl, uh, probably in her mid-30s as well. And interestingly enough, uh, you know, I said, listen, hey, you know, I'd like to record the conversation. They obviously said no. Uh, and I said, uh, uh, the same time, you know, if there's anything in the, you know that comes up, I'll probably stop the conversation uh, because I'll be honest with you, I don't want any subjective reporting about what it is you're going to gather here today. I'd like to know what kind of evidence you're looking to gather before I, you know, start asking and answering any questions. And 
And they basically came right out and said they're, they've got a list of individuals uh, that were invited or attended a New Horizons conference in, uh, in Iran or elsewhere associated with it. And they were interested in anybody that uh, um, uh, was attending that because that has been now sanctioned as being associated with IGRC. And uh, uh, obviously uh, they've been uh, called out as terrorists for the entire um, uh, elite forces for uh, Iran. The real uh, crux of it was if you are going to participate in these events uh, and at, the t at this time when there are sanctions on this particular group, uh, any type of funds that you receive, whether it be for airfare or food or uh, lodging or any of those types of things are clear violations and would be uh, considerable, considered a, 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 um, a, a point at which you could be arrested uh, because you're in clear violation of receiving those funds from that group. So that's the, uh, that was the real, because um, I tried to get explicit detail on what, you know, what it is, why would you arrest me? What, what exactly would I have to do? And so that uh, they gave me that information. Hey, listen, yeah. I got to run because I have a 1230. I got to run into a, I, I have had a conversation with you in a Florida Department of Transportation vehicle. This was not done on work time. <laughs> <laughs> Just so got you it, know, got I know it's it's being heavily monitored because these uh, these communications are are highly sus sus suspected. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sandra Hicks, for coordinating this thing with uh, our friends and colleagues. Um, let's begin with the trauma that is right now occurring, where. Uh, some of our guests are, are being intimidated by security people within the U.S. And that is intimidating because we're getting close to the date of the, the Beirut uh, conference, a New Horizon conference. So let me have uh, your take on this and then we'll, we'll start from there. Um, sure, Nader. It's good to be back talking with you. Um, the FBI in America has a long history of suppressing dissent. Uh, there was murder against the Black Panthers. They've murdered 9-11 truth activists. Uh, they've they've uh, been a part of the suppression of um, uh, the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King. Uh, I know the FBI is not um, all bad, uh, but some of these people are really misinformed. We had a Zoom call earlier with Scott Ricard, who was approached by FBI. Um, they didn't even know who Steve Mnuchin uh, was. They weren't aware of who the, you know, the, the head of the U.S. Treasury is. So um, uh, it's unfortunate, but three of uh, my fellow American citizens who are planning to attend the New Horizon conference this September have been harassed by FBI under threat of arrest. And so we had a, a big Zoom call today. And we, we, we talked amongst ourselves about what we're going to do. Okay. Um, who is the next appropriate person, do you think, who might be in a rush to leave because we've been having some technical problems to start to continue what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Can you talk to Phil Giraldi? Yes, please? I think that's good. Perfect. Dr. Um, Dr. My, my take basically, we, we've been discussing this for the past hour. Uh, my take is essentially we have a short term problem in terms of Beirut. We have a long term problem in terms of how the Treasury Department and FBI are looking at the sanctions issue in connection with New Horizon. Uh, I think the key to this is that sanctions are connected to tangible exchanges of products or goods or money. Right. Uh, this is an opportunity and, and for, for communication, and I can see why they would be intimidated and try to curb it and try to stop it or start to harass it. Um, Mr. Springman, what is your take on that? Well, I had this conversation with the uh, the sanctions attorney uh, some months back and he said that it, it's the issue is not only just money and, and receiving something in return but is participating in a sanctioned conference run by sanctioned people and he pointed out that the uh, an additional issue was that the New Horizons conference had been linked to the Iran Revolutionary Guards Corps 
uh, efforts to supposedly recruit uh, people for the Iranian intelligence service. And since the IRGC had been uh, tagged by the U.S. government as a terrorist organization, uh, it's another uh, reason to avoid participating in the conference. And I would dearly love to go, uh, but I don't want to end up in jail and I don't want to lose my house or anything else. So I, I'm really concerned about this. Yeah. Well, we know that uh, <laughs> these are false accusations because this is what I've been oh, doing course. for the past decade. I've, I've been interviewing various whistleblowers and dissidents and activists in the States and been exposing it to the Iranian audience. Perhaps that's why they're very upset that we are the only source of communication and let's just block this only one source. The foreign ministry in Iran is not yeah, doing it, this. It was too successful. You had 50 people from all over the world speaking and meeting and interviewing and exchanging information. Yes, and, and they didn't like them. Another reason was why uh, former officers were there. I mean, we had before professors, we had writers, activists, but we never had former officers. We had never had former State Department officers or Pentagon or the CIA. And I, and I knew that from beforehand. That's why we got the shrine uh, in Mashhad to support us. And in the, in the next stage, we also are going to have voluntary money supporting us. And we're going to have the documents to show that various institutions that are supporting this sort of thing, that we know that, that uh, they are looking for excuses to intimidate. So let me continue with uh, Scott Bennett. What's your take? Because you've been involved in this. We've had various discussions through Sandra Hicks and other programs that you've had. Why is this thing becoming uh, so sensitive? Of course, we have the situation in the Persian Gulf right now. We had the drone incident, uh, other things that make it even more uh, hot. And, and, uh, and this, this is a venue for communication. Uh, so I'm, I'm asking yeah. you, why, why is it so sensitive? Well, you're, you're, you're having the best people communicate from America. You're having men of, of patriotic duty who've served in the government, who've served in the military, who have a high capacity understanding of, of global affairs and also understand that we have a, uh, an opportunity to make peace and build a relationship with Iran. And some parties don't want that, specifically the Zionist elements who have infiltrated the U.S. government, like Seagal, Mandelwecker, and, and others that uh, uh, Michael Springman and others have exposed. Phil Giraldi's also helped expose her uh, as, as you know, possibly being a dual Israeli agent. So there are agents inside the U.S. government that are pushing Donald Trump. The Secretary of Treasury is one of them, Mnuchin, uh, to, to, uh, to violate everything that uh, can be done against Iran. And I think the only option is file an action in court to make it known that we as American citizens are not going to stand by and allow our government uh, to be hijacked by Zionists or other elements pushing an Israeli agenda rather than an American agenda. I think there needs to be uh, a court action by all of us that at least gets it into the public sphere that they, what they are doing is a violation of our constitutional rights and they're they're doing it to foment war. The other thing is a massive media outcry needs to be uh, heard that the U.S. Uh, government, FBI, and these Zionist elements are threatening American citizens uh, from from going over and speaking truth. Okay, uh, do we have Kevin Barrett online? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry that I'm not in a position to use the camera. Okay, but yeah, it's good to be with you guys. Good. Thank you so much, Kevin. We, we'll be listening to your voice. And Mr. Springman and Mr. Bennett and myself will be reacting to what you're saying and your voice will be heard. What's your take on this, uh, Dr. Barrett? Well, this uh, crazy attack on New Horizons coming out of the Zionist-occupied Treasury Department is a real tribute to what you've been able to accomplish over the years, Nader, because the, the New Horizon group has been having these increasingly successful conferences where many of the world's leading, truly independent intellectuals have been gathering and exchanging views, making Tehran what E. Michael Jones has called the capital of the free world. And I think after years of this, the Zionists are starting to panic. You know, they're they're having a rearguard action against Americans waking up and recognizing that they're going 
government has been taken over by a hostile foreign power. And I think they've determined that New Horizon is one of the leading problems for them. And that's why they've gone to all of these great lengths to go after Marzia Hashemi and set her up uh, on false charges and then use that to try to leverage this totally bogus claim that New Horizon is somehow some kind of spy operation when it's obviously all about intellectual exchange. And so it's it's uh, really a, a fantastic that you've been so successful that you've drawn this kind of pushback. Okay, is is uh, Sandra Hicks online? Yes, sir. Okay, can we have your image? Oh, sure, sure. Sorry about that. Okay, Sandra, what's you've you've been very implementive in getting various Zoom conferences uh, for your audience about this issue. Now, somebody might dismiss and say, okay, this is just a, just a little conference. But uh, we got sanctioned with the highest level of sanction, SDGT. They've labeled, they labeled myself, my wife, my colleagues, Mr. Montazemi, Rashravi, and other, others and other as SDGT, uh, Special Designated Global Terrorist. I mean, we just invited Americans to come to Iran and talk about what's going on in the U.S. We've been only a bridge of communication. And you have been doing this in, the, in your Zoom conferences. I'd like to see your take on that, please. Sure. So, yeah, I have been doing these Zoom conferences and trying to do this as a peace activist, but also as a member of the DSA, as somebody who's a democratic socialist. I guess I'm sort of the, the token lefty in this group. And uh, but that's that's it's great to build common cause with 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 people and create a big tent that says we're standing for freedom and justice for Palestinians. We're standing against the, the U.S. propaganda machine. We're not uh, affiliated with terrorism. Iran, if you really study and go beyond the myth, Iran has never backed Al Qaeda or ISIS or any of the other groups. And those groups have been backed by uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, to an extent Israel, to an extent the U.S. deep state has worked with these groups. And so all we're standing for is a free inquiry, free speech, freedom of religion. And that's why I think it's important that we get the word out that there has been a, a ratcheting up of FBI harassment against American citizens who are planning to attend uh, the New Horizon Conference this September in Beirut. Uh, thank you, Sandra. I want to ask my next question for Mr. Springman. Don't you think there is a, is a not, not very subtle campaign by the security forces to scare the guests away? Oh, yes, indeed. I, I, we'd heard Scott Rickard uh, just earlier talk about how he had been visited by two people, supposedly from the FBI. Uh, they called me months ago and wanted me to talk to them, and I said no. Uh, they went to uh, Mike Maloof's place at 6.30 in the morning, and he eventually threw them out after letting them in. Uh, so uh, they want to make sure that you're being watched and know that you're going to have all kinds of problems. And in Rickard's case, they told him flatly, if you go to any conference sponsored by New Horizon, uh, you will be arrested upon your return to the United States. Let me just go back to um, Dr. Bennett, uh, Dr. Uh, Barrett. Um, you know, Kevin, this also is an opportunity, the way we see it, is for networking. A lot of the uh, people in the States don't get to see each other. I mean, because the distance is great. And the, in Mashhad, we realize more than time that was spent in speaking in the conference was spent in the cafeteria, in the coffee shops, in the lobbies, uh, the different guests talking with each other. I mean, there, there were incidents where they're talking to Rabbi Weiss, there was Miko Pellet, born in Israel, uh, there was uh, Alexander Dugan from Russia, uh, and, and many others. There was the, the, uh, the deputy to Louis Farah Khan, and I realized besides the conference, there is the chance where these people, these illuminated Americans, patriotic Americans, get to see each other and exchange ideas. And I always think that another reason they don't want this thing to happen is they don't want you people to convene and talk. What's your take on that? I think that's exactly right. I, I know that meeting people in person often uh, really establishes much better relationships than the same people would have just communicating over the internet. And I, I learned that in 2006 when the 9-11 truth movement came into its own 
thanks to a couple of conferences that were very, very successful, drawing uh, thousands of participants in the spring of 2006. And so, some of that happens at the New Horizon event as well. Uh, people really end up uh, liking each other. And, and I think that that actually pushes back against the problem that we have when we're only doing internet communications, which is that we don't, you know, we don't see each other as, in, as human beings. We don't have the body language, the facial expressions, and so on. And it's much easier for people to start fighting with each other over political differences. And once you've met somebody in person, it's a lot easier to feel a kind of solidarity and then to work with that person effectively. And so I think that's true. I think it's one of the reasons that the conferences are effective and one of the reasons that the uh, the bad guys, the Zionist occupation government, or whatever you want to call it, is trying to shut them down. Thank you. Sander, um, you have found this vehicle of the Zoom conference, and you've talked about what has happened. And now we are on the verge of, uh, of the, the next conference, which is even more hectic and more controversial than the previous one that was held in Mashhad. Um, what was the result of, what was the reaction that, from the Zoom conference that you've had? Um, I know that, that, we, that in America, you, you guys do not have the mainstream antenna, but I know your, your efforts have strong reactions from people who do care. Can you talk about the reactions from what you have received from your conferences, Zoom conferences? Yeah, sure. Um, the, one of the reactions I had to the recent Zoom conference is it really did start a dialogue inside the Peace and Social Justice Committee at the Quaker meeting about Zionism. And uh, there's a lot of prejudices. There's a lot of prejudices against speaking about Zionism. People try to take the word away. People say, don't even use that word because it's too controversial. Um, or they don't want to hear about the, the five dancing Israelis. They say like, you know, they just, they literally go like this and they say, I don't want to hear about 9-11 or the five dancing Israelis. And so I say, well, okay, maybe you're right. The lawyers committee is pursuing this legally. The lawyers committee for 9-11 inquiry plans to open an investigation into the five celebrating arrestees. They were arrested on 9-11 for celebrating the attacks in New Jersey and there's a paper trail. So maybe sometimes I have to learn how to choose my words differently. But it is key to me that there, there were Israeli intelligence assets. In the same way that we had Acosta recently say Epstein was an intelligence asset. Um, I don't know, on a slightly tangential point there. Um, I, I've been learning that it, this is still so very controversial. You know, we had legislation passed recently that suppresses BDS inside the U.S. Congress. There's a movement against BDS. But like I was saying earlier on the, the earlier Zoom call, I have a lot of hope uh, the way that um, people are getting more and more critical of APAC. Uh, presidential candidates are no longer all going to the APAC conference. So I think that if the time is right to... to um, voice our concerns about U.S. foreign policy and how it's unjustly biased in favor of Israel. You know, I'll tell you this, and, and, I'll, and I'll wrap up with this point. A lot of mainstream media, uh, a lot of people who only watch mainstream media recently saw the Israelis blowing up the homes of Palestinians in the West Bank. And a lot of 9-11 truth people said, wow, what does that look like? It looks like controlled demolition of a, uh, on 9-11. Uh, but the point is that that Israel can't go on blowing up Palestinian homes. They can't go on massacring protesters like they did uh, during the Jerusalem embassy protest in Gaza. You know, this this can't go on. Uh, I think we're, we have a higher calling to something better. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sanders. You know, each one of you, as I as I'm watching you, uh, has a, a very strong history especially the former officers uh, who have rejected the, the aggression, who have paid, have sacrificed, who've paid a very big price. You've been laid off uh, and you're still being intimidated. Uh, the case of uh, uh, Mr. Springman, uh, I know that uh, you, you held a very good position when you were an officer in the State Department in Saudi Arabia. You objected, they didn't listen to your story you objected further, and you paid a big price. And right well, now, yeah, and, and you're still being 
intimidated and pushed around because yeah. they, they, they know that uh, you you know your mind is set. Uh, although they try to push you around and push others, you're one of the elder people who's proven uh, who you, who you are. And the same goes with uh, with Scott Bennett. Uh, you've paid a price. You've been imprisoned. You've been intimidated. And God knows what. I mean, these are stories for the future of Americans. I think we're in, in a state, I really believe, I'm talking from Tehran, from my home in Tehran. I think we have stepped into the future now. I think one day in the future, the Americans, the patriotic Americans, the illuminated Americans will look at your lives and what you've done. And look at this moment and what we're talking about. Uh, and what are we talking about? We, we're talking about who is avoiding uh, uh, the forming of a bridge of communication. President Tuck, Trump talks about communication. Well, this is communication. If you're looking for communication, this is communication. I mean, why don't, why don't they pay attention? So um, let me, I don't, I don't want to talk. I want to ask Mr. Springman. I think that you have all paid a price. You've all sacrificed. And yeah. um, I think, don't you feel in, in a way isolated and also like a step forward into the future in America that the public and, of course, the administration has no idea what's going on? Well, exactly right. People keep saying, why do you keep fighting? Why do you keep criticizing America? You would get farther if you write nice things about the wonders of this glorious country. And I tell them, no, I'm writing the truth about this country. And nobody wants to hear it. I was at the gym uh, maybe a year or so ago, and uh, one of the girls in the gym was graduating, and I told her about uh, my book, Visas for Al Qaeda, um, Bern Lyons' book, Eyes on Havana. He had been a former CIA uh, non-official cover officer in Cuba, and told her about the essence of the books, and she said, no, the American government won't do that. You're crazy. Uh, it's not possible. And I said, it sure God is possible. I lived through it. Byrne lived through it. Other people have had similar experiences. Uh, and the, the Americans still believe that their civics books that they had in high school, that this country is the greatest country on earth. It's an exceptional country. It is a city upon a hill to which all the peoples of the world look up in great admiration. And that is not the case, but you can't convince them otherwise of it. Um, Kevin Baird, what's your take, take on that, continuing on Mr. Springman's comment? Well, I, I think most ordinary Americans have the sense that, that what they're getting in the mainstream may not be the full truth, uh, but they just don't have enough time to get into the details of what really is going on and precisely you know, which lies are being told to whom, by whom, and so on. I've found a tremendous uh, skepticism towards authority figures and media and government out there. The latest poll data from just yesterday, I believe, uh, shows that the mistrust of the U.S. government is at the highest level ever. And so when I talk to ordinary people, I find that for the most part, they're not particularly hostile or uh, rejecting the kinds of things I tell them, even things like 9-11, which are technically blasphemous, really, if you try to say them in mainstream institutions, and anybody who has anything to lose can lose their job and lose their reputation for talking about them. But if you just talk with the ordinary people on the street in relaxed conversation, they're not the least bit surprised for the most part to hear that you think that 9-11 was a false flag. Uh, they have heard these arguments and are not rejecting them for the most part. Um, and likewise, the, the issue of Israel, I think, is, is uh, maybe starting to get some traction, too, as we have more polarization. And interestingly, it's the so-called ultra-patriotic right-wing Americans who are being most heavily brainwashed uh, for Israel. And the left, and especially younger people on the left, the people who support people like Ilhan Omar and uh, the other young uh, congresswomen, are becoming more aware of the evils of Zionism. And so it's it's an interesting time where there's a mass awakening and, and bits and pieces of it are happening on different parts of the political spectrum. Uh, the mainstream American now, I think, is, is getting much more skeptical. Uh, so we really don't, I don't think we have that much of a problem with the average people here. What our, pro our problem is with the managers of the system and particularly the people who are trying to keep the Zionist and warmongering policies going. Thank you, Kevin. 
Um, Scott, you can have the last word, um, and I appreciate all of your participation. Scott, what is, what is our duty? I mean, a person like myself <clears throat> here in Iran, I mean, I, after they sanctioned us, we said, okay, we're not going to have the next conference in Iran because it might be uh, too dangerous for our dear guests. Uh, let's move on to Lebanon. Uh, and then, of course, we, what, 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 is our, what should we do? Should we back off? Should we be scared? Uh, sh should we not be innovative in, in breaking this, this wall? You cannot back down from bullies. You cannot be intimidated from criminals and liars. You have to attack them and, and knock them down uh, as the fools and the liars that they are. And you do it diplomatically and legally, but you, you cannot back down and be quiet in the face of tyranny or they will be <clears throat> far worse in the more uh, demands that they make on your property, on your life in the future. So this is the declaration of civil war, as far as I'm concerned, when the government has been hijacked and the agencies of the FBI or the Treasury Department are now uh, threatening American citizens from exercising their constitutional rights. Uh, that cannot be tolerated. And I will go into court and I will file an action myself if need be. Others are welcome to join their names to the list. But I will go into court and I don't care what the outcome, I will fight them as hard as I can to say, you cannot stop me from going anywhere in this world and speaking truth. And uh, that is what the founding fathers of America knew. That's why we were, we have our rights enshrined so that we are not slaves under a government tyranny. And th this is the moment to stand up and act. Now, no one wants to be thrown in jail and there are legal precautions and, and things that need to be done. But we have to make a stand against this and call everybody to an account. Everybody in America has to si side with truth tellers and real ambassadors and real diplomats, or they side with the tyrants and the slave masters that are currently occupying the government. And as for me and my house, I will always stand for those who speak truth and freedom. Amen. <laughs> You're amen, doing amen, it, David. Amen, amen. So thank you so much. God bless you. It was wonderful seeing you and wonderful to hear you. Tashakur. Salam. Salam alaikum. Khuda hafiz. Khuda hafiz. Thank you so much. Okay. Take good care. God bless you. Thank you for your attention. Our guests have offered much food for thought. See you next time.